In studio today on Zoom is none other than the 2022 Next CMT Women of Country, Jenna Paulette. She's a well-known singer-songwriter, living the dream in Nashville, but she resides in Louisville, Texas, and grew up on the border, on the Texas-Oklahoma border in Thackerville, Oklahoma. We are so, so honored to have Jenna here on the podcast. And um, for all of you guys listening, I hope you guys learned something from this new opportunity with Jenna, getting to hear her story. Jenna, we're so excited to have you here. Thank you for clearing your schedule and having just a moment with us. We appreciate it. Of course. Thank you all so much for having me. Oh, without a doubt. And we have so many exciting things to talk about. You have some big news coming up that I'll let you reveal. But before we do that, I want to talk through your growing up. How did you grow up? What was it like on the border of Texas and Oklahoma and, and the ranch life there? Yeah, um, my family had a cow-calf operation on the Oklahoma-Texas line. We had mainly Black Angus mama cows and ended up crossing on Angus and then Charlet. And I just love those little charcoal babies. <laughs> I just think they're so stinking cute. And of course, we had a few like more, I don't know, mutt looking mama cows that just produced every year, but were kind of crazy. Um, but we, I just loved it. I think I fell in love with ranching and the lifestyle at a very young age. And that had a lot to do with my my mom and my, my grandparents and the way that they value um, that way of life. And my dad as well. My dad's more like that side of the family is more business oriented, which is why um, Louisville was where we called home. So my dad needed to get to an airport, but we spent so much time on that ranch. I worked there in high school and college and just, I, I fell in love with it. I fell in love with the lifestyle. And I think because of the lifestyle, I fell in love with country music and it wasn't really the other way around, which I think for more people, it's that they fall in love with country music and then they want to dive into the lifestyle. And for me, it was like, I was on the back of a four wheeler checking cows and singing wide open spaces at the top of my lungs because it's where I was. And, um, yeah, so for me, it, it was just this perfect, like hand in hand way to bring out what I really feel like God made me to do. Um, and that is sing country music and cowboy. And, uh, I think I just knew that from a very young age and, and my experiences growing up or what kind of led me there. Um, yeah, I, I think it's amazing when you get exposed to agriculture in any way, shape or form when you are growing up, because it teaches you that life and death are very real things and you deal with it on a you know daily, weekly, monthly basis. And I think because you realize that life is precious, that you value it more and um, you see a lot of sunrises and a lot of sunsets. And it just gives you this perspective on the world that I think is missing a lot in our culture today because we live in, you know, cities and, and I, I mean, I, I have an apartment in Nashville, so I very much am experiencing that part of it too, where you're living in a city, your head's kind of buried in your phone. And, um, and yeah, I don't know. I just felt like I was very blessed to have the opposite growing up. And really my goal is to bring an aspect of the ranching lifestyle to the mainstream so that people can just, get a feel of what they're missing and in, in, in most respects, what they don't know they're missing. Oh, yes. There's rural Oklahoma and rural America is the most beautiful places on the earth. And selfishly, I, I don't want to even tell people how wonderful it is just because <laughs> you want to keep it to yourself. But but yes, I love how big of an advocate you are for that. And I'm going to kind of go off track really quick. This is a little surprise yeah. question. I just thought of this. Thackerville, Oklahoma is also home to Terry Bradshaw. Have you ever yes. have you interacted with him in his horse ranch? <laughs> The funny thing is everybody asked me that question. We've never run into each other. I think his daughter followed me a couple weeks ago on social media. So I'm hoping we cross paths sooner than later. But uh, but yeah, they're they're there. Everybody asked me that question. And I don't know, we just kind of kept to ourselves. My my grandparents' house was in Gainesville, Texas, which is 15 minutes from Thackerville. And my grandma always said, I don't want to die in Oki. And so she, they planted their roots in Gainesville instead of living on the ranch. And he just commuted every single day. So we knew a bunch of people, obviously, in Thackerville because they were our neighbors. But it wasn't the same as like literally sleeping there, you know, and waking up being right there. So I never met the Bradshaws or I haven't yet, but I would absolutely love to. And I just love how real they are in um, in the world that we live in as well. I think I just I highly respect what they do and what they're about. 
I couldn't agree more. And we've got to give Rachel a shout out. I am a really good friend with Rachel. And in fact, she's getting married soon. I get the opportunity oh to go God. to her wedding and um, it's going to be a fun experience, but you're absolutely right for, for just like you, very, very humble. And that's what I appreciate and respect about them and you as well. Um, even just having anything, anytime anyone mentions Jenna Paulette, they say, wow, she's so talented and so humble. And so that's yeah. huge. That's, that's big, you know, right. But I want to kind of go yeah. back to your humble beginnings a little bit. What about Tell us about the, your first memory that you remember having of like, wow, I can actually sing pretty good. I'm, I'm out here singing to these cows and I can actually harmonize and I can actually hit the notes. So what was your first memory there? It had to have been at a young age. Yeah, I think because uh, my mom and my grandma both sang in church. My mom, she, we've never not had, that was terrible English. <laughs> we've always had uh, country music playing in our kitchen. Like there wasn't I don't remember many nights that we didn't have music playing in our house. There was always music playing in the car. It was always country. And uh, my mom has told me before that even when she was like nursing me and rocking me, she would sing songs to me and I would coo back on pitch. And so I think she recognized that there was potential for that in me and she had gotten it from her mom. So she just kind of paid attention when I was very young and then helped me kind of realize that as I was growing up, my first solo was in church at age three. And um, from there, I, I think my most core memory of thinking about country music as a career path was like eight years old. I was in our gold suburban that we had and uh, my siblings were all in there with me. I'm one of four kids and three girls and a boy. And my mom and dad were in the front and Dixie Chicks record was playing. And um, I was singing along to either Cowboy Take Me Away or Wide Open spaces and my dad turned down the music and turned it back up and I was on pitch and on time and I remember him saying I remember like his lips in the rearview mirror being like she could do this she's she could really do this and I think it just like clicked in me at that moment like there wasn't another option from then on it was just kind of like okay well these are the two things that I love and they go hand in hand so everything in my life was uh to that purpose and uh, yeah, it took longer than I hoped, but, <laughs> but it's going great. And, uh, and yeah, it, it just, it started young and I'm, I'm glad that I could recognize that and, and that my parents could recognize that in me so that I could have intention in all of the goals that I set my, for myself in life. Oh, without a doubt. And that's what I respect about you again, going back to that respect is um, I grew up singing Hannah Montana and thinking that I was going to be the next star, but like you actually are doing it. And that's what makes you, you, you're taking the initiative to, to become something and work hard at it. Cause you know that it takes a lot of work and we'll get into that in a little bit, but kind of moving on to the ranch life and Nashville life. Is it true yeah. that, um, after you're done songwriting and getting the glamorous life, you can be seen at like friends, cattle ranches, helping them work cattle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, in fact, like so I, I used to, I went home during college every summer, worked on our place and helped my granddad and my uncle, fell in love with it there. And then it, during 2020, my granddad passed away. And so our ranch sold and I didn't have the ability to go home and work anymore. So I just started calling people that are friends of mine that have operations all over the place and um, just said like, hey, if y'all need a hand, like I'm just trying to keep my chops up, please, please use me. Don't, you don't even have to pay me. Just let me come help y'all. And so, I, yeah, I've worked all over the place. I've worked in Colorado, Utah, lots of Texas and Oklahoma. And um, yeah, I, I think it's an honor. And I love, I, I think um, it's cool to see how people do it on other operations because every operation is different. The grass is different. Your way you set up your pins and your traps are different. Like it just makes you a better cowboy to experience a million different situations and be able to do it with, um, gosh, what do they call those? Norforks and, or calf tables or just roping and dragging them to the fire. Like there's just a million ways to do it. And now I've gotten to do it all kinds of ways. And, and so it's just, it's really helped me out. And I love um, getting to work with my friends too. So, and the goal for me is to get our ranch back. I still have my um, brand and my name and registered in Love County, Oklahoma. And the guy that bought our ranch from us just told me to let him know when I'm ready. And that he said, he was like, I got a feeling you're going to get it back. So keep your keys. I didn't change the locks. And so, yeah, so I've got like just all of this hope for where I'm headed. And um, like, as far as ranching goes, as much as singing goes. Um, and so for me, it's like getting to help out on other people's places and 
getting to work for whoever will let me come and help um, just makes me better for, you know, what the real goal is for me. And that is touring on a high level and ranching on a high level. And you're great at both. I mean, it, it's so cool to watch you from to go on stage and live the glamorous life that everyone sees the city people live and then turn right around and live the humbling life that's every day <laughs> working cattle covered in dirt. <laughs> and so uh, you know what? That's what I'm thankful for because I never, ever, ever want to have a season of my life where my hands aren't dirty and that somebody can't tell me what to do. Um, because I think in like the glamorous life people, it's so easy to get caught up in the attention of it all but when you are ranching when you are working for somebody it is their place and you are under their authority and it's just nice to have somebody to say Jenna get over there you know don't let that cow buy you know and yell at me you know like and just <laughs> I, I'm not perfect and and I've got so much to learn and it's good to be in those situations and um you know, you know, I, I tell people that work with me in the music industry too, like, Hey, like if something can be better, do not just tell me it's good because you think that's what you should tell me. I want to be the best. And, um, it goes the same with ranching. And I think, um, because of that, like it's my goal to keep both of my boots on the ground. And, um, I think that's the way that God's given me a path to do that. And that's my prayer is that that would always be the truth. It's so evident that you're using that you're using his story for his your, your story for his glory, truly. Um, and along those same lines, it's is that how you kind of get your inspiration for your songs? I know Girl in the Country, I mean every song, Slow Draw, Bless Her Heart, El Paso, everything comes back to you, the girl I was. Um, so is that how you get your inspo? Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, and I've talked to so many people in Nashville about this recently because um for me. I get inspired because I'm listening to people talk that grew up like I did that, um, that are around people that the kind of people that I love to be around all the time. And my best inspiration comes from not being in Nashville. Like, I think there's this, there's a lot of good that's come from it because I think it's taught me how to write a great commercial country song, one that hopefully belongs on the radio um, and it's given me all the relationships with people that know how to do that and know how to take an idea of mine and lyric of mine and just drive it completely home. But I think there's a limit to how you can connect with real people. If you stay on the hamster wheel and you're doing the whole writing thing 11 to three every day in Nashville, and that's all you do, you're not living life. And I've told my team, you know, like, I get to be out here with Ross in West Texas and we're working on ranches and going to people's 40th wedding anniversary, two-step dances at the civic center. And, you know, I've got a rancher out here. I was just talking to that Ross works for. And, um, and he was like, you know, Jen out here, it's hard to make a living, but it's easy to make a life. And I was like, you can't hear that kind of thing in Nashville in the hamster wheel and the commercial business aspect of it. You just can't hear those things that are true and real and right. And that make my music worth anything at all. And so, um, so yeah, I, I try and stay, I, I go and I'm a part of it because they're, that's where the best songwriters are, but I have to be living it for it to carry any weight to impact the world the way that I would love for it to impact the world. So yeah, I think, those two things just, they balance each other out. And I think going back to the Nashville side of it, you, you're a mentee of Ashley Gorley. You got to sign with Seagull Music. You probably have lots of writing sessions, lots of rights, as you would call them. Yeah. What's it yeah. like to go to sit through a write? Because some of my friends have described it as quite literally, it's a bunch of talented people sitting in a room with just all their ideas. And that's yeah. how the best songs are created. Totally. Yeah. It's, it's like that. And I think um, it's, it goes two ways for me. Like I've got, I'll give you two examples. Sometimes I'll hear somebody say, you know, it's hard to make a living, but easy to make a life. And I'll just write that into my phone. And I don't know what it sounds like or feels like. And that's one of those, you're going into a write and everybody's tossing around ideas till one lands. And like, there's not much around it. I didn't have a melody or anything. It just became what it needed to be in the room that day because I was with the right people that know how to write that kind of song. Um, and then I have moments like, uh, where it's more of a solo thing that I bring in that is more polished and that there's a song called make the world a small town on the girl I was my record. And, um, 
I had just been in Thackerville shooting the girl I was music video and Lori who owns the front porch cafe in Thackerville is, which is where my family went to eat after working cattle. Our brand is on the wall in there. Like it's just so small town and so awesome. And I, I called her cause I knew they weren't open on Saturdays and Sundays. And I was like, Lori, um, Hey, this is Jenna Paulette. I don't know if you remember me or not. My granddad was Pete Jones. And she was like, Oh my gosh, Pete Jones. He ordered a bacon and mustard sandwich and I was like oh gosh I can't believe you remember that she she was like it's a hard order to forget <laughs> and it's been it had been two and a half years since he passed away and um she still remembered his order and I was on my flight back to Nashville and I wrote if I could make the world a small town in my notes and I just wrote a poem and um like I started out with like folks around here they give you the shirt off their back maybe simple how we talk but our words a check you can cash and I talk about the difference, with, like how I wish that London to Tennessee could feel like Thackerville to me. And um, there's moments like that where it's just like this nugget of truth that resonates so deeply with my soul that poetry comes out and then I take it into a writing room and they help me drive the idea home. But the nuts and bolts of it, the skeleton of it, it was something that very much came from a raw place in my heart and um, became a song and and I've learned to trust that side of me as a writer in the last year really because people have been like oh no I love that and I'm like oh it's good enough because I think being mentored by somebody like Ashley Gorley who's got 65 number ones or more I don't even know right now he's just ridiculous and he wasn't easy on me but I was happy about it like I he, I would send him an idea and he was like well that could have been good if you know <laughs> like xyz and he was just like beautifully like brutal in in the best way possible because I think that made me look at my songwriting critically and not just like this stream of thought feeling thing that you know I wanted people to feel with me because I think there's a way to articulate things that hits home a more uh concisely than you know like the songs I wrote originally are way more watered down versions of what I can write now and that's because he was very honest with me but um once you get that structure down and you learn how to write a great song you have to learn how to trust the soul of what you've been trying to communicate um that much more so that the two can come together at that point point. and I was talking to somebody on my team and they were like yeah Jenna you graduated from songwriting school now you need to settle in to who you are and what your voice is and what you have to say and trust yourself and that stuff has started happening this year and and really a big part of that was make the world a small town and realizing that most of that lyric was just what came out of my heart and it was just shaping it up with one other person that made it um, something that would resonate with a lot of people. And um, I can't wait for people to hear that song. It was, and it's that song and then a song called Stop, Stop and Smell the Horses, which I sent to Jess on the Justin team like the day after I got the demo back because I was so, I knew she'd get it, you know, and it, it's a playoff of Stop and Smell the Roses and the hook is, um, cause it ain't always roses. Remember to stop and smell the horses. And it's just all these little things like taste the tequila before you kill it with that lime, pick the blackberries off the vine, listen to the crickets, watch the sunrise and sunset, you know, like all of these things that are very quintessential to, um, anybody that grew up in the heartland who gets caught up in the busyness of life and, um, needs to slow it down. And yeah, anyway, um, those two songs on the record were just me and one other person. And it was, really fun to learn how to trust myself in that and learn what my voice sounds like in a writer room as much as you know having people that are just ridiculous songwriters and being like no like let's say it your way you know because you want to make those people happy when you're in the room too so anyway it's been a learning experience and since you brought up your album I'll let you go ahead and share the details it's coming (laughs) up soon right yes oh my gosh uh March 31st the girl I was the title track um honestly is what made me feel like I could even put a record out. I'm, I love artists that put out albums. And I think for a long time, cause I was in a relationship that really robbed me of who I was. He really shut my voice down and there's a million things I could go into, but that's not the focus of where I am right now. It's right. where I'm headed. Um, and I think when I was in that, I couldn't just be who I am. And so much of that felt like I needed to change. And um, there was so much pressure on me from him and I really just only found joy in my career. And now it's like, I 
God set my feet on solid ground again and giving me the ability to recognize, oh, I've just always been that girl. And that moment for me was, um, I was on a writer's retreat last year and I'd had some time to process everything. And it was like April or early May. And uh, I was going to get everybody pizza. I was with Jesse, Joe Dillon, Will Bundy and Jeb Gibson and Will and Jeb are all over my record. And Jesse Joe is my first weekend with her. And she's Dean Dillon's daughter who wrote the chair for George Strait. So wow. I just wanted to make sure that I had something valuable to offer. So I went, I had my dog and my truck and went to get pizza for everybody. And the sun was setting and this picture of me as a little girl helping my granddad sell my uncle Hicks cattle popped into my head. And I just remember having this hot can of orange Gatorade, freckles on my face, the smell of dust and cows in the air. And I remember just feeling like, like proud and at peace and good. And my mom had taken this picture of me and it was at my grandma's house for the longest time. And every time I was there, I would look at that picture and think, oh, I love that girl. Like, that's who I am. It's like, you know, when you like, like see something in yourself and you're like, it makes you just proud and settled all at once. And that's how I felt every time I looked at that picture and it popped into my mind on this pizza trip to go get <laughs> dinner for everybody. And I was like, oh, I'm just getting back to the girl I was. And I was like, if that's the only song we write this weekend, then everything will make sense. And um, we nailed it. I mean, like, it just felt so honest and so right. And like it represented so many girls that, you know, we all get caught up in life. We all get caught up in motherhood or careers or relationships like me or um, just being busy and so easy to forget who we are. And um, I felt like it was a love song reminder to, you know, girls across the United States that grew up like I did, who might have lost sight of that girl. And um, when I got the demo back, I was on a trip to Wyoming with Boot Barn. <laughs> and um, it was so random. I got the the song back right before I got on my flight and I was listening to it. My manager and I had been talking about me putting a record out and I was like, I, I know I, I want to do that. I just don't even know where to start. And getting that song back when I landed in Wyoming, I called her. I said, the record's called The Girl I Was. The first thing people hear is going to be an intro instrumental version of Home on the Range. And everything in between is going to be about people that grew up on the range. And it just made sense to me finally. And it's like, that was the missing puzzle piece that let me have the freedom to say what I needed to say. And um, it's got some songs that are already out on it, uh, like Country and the Girl, because that I just felt like it was a people's song. And, and it's very much part of the story too. Like when you hear it from beginning to end, you're going to see you know, just all the puzzle pieces come together. And um, yeah, so it's, it's the first body of work that I felt like I could put my name on that actually felt worthy of being called an album to me, because I have very high standards, you know, like I love, you know, Reba McIntyre and, um, gosh, George Strait and the Dixie Chicks and Miranda Lambert and these people that have put together pieces of art that I will forever listen to top to bottom. And um, so that's like the standard that I hold myself to. And then, you know, you're trying to do something great. And this was the first time I felt like I could even approach a benchmark like that. Um, and it's, you know, obviously I've got a million ways to grow and um and I can already see the things that I want to be better on my next record but I'm very proud of this work of art and I feel like it is a step a very right step in the right direction it and is. I think people will get it you know Oh yeah. And you're, you're doing everything to make it look so easy too. So I commend you for that, but there's just something <laughs> about the rawness and the realness of every song that you put out that, um, for instance, even my friend Ralph in Germany, who you actually got to randomly meet, yes. um, he has listened <laughs> to every song since meeting you and is you're probably your biggest fan in Germany and ha knows, uh, you know, the four songs by heart, the four songs that he's mainly listened to. And so I think that's really cool because people that are enthralled with the Western industry, they're automatically enthralled with you because you live it. You're, you're not like Nashville, you live it every day and, and you, 
understand and appreciate the hard work that goes into it. But really quick before we go, I have one final question because one thing that popped out to me when I first heard the name Jenna Paulette before I was even with Justin was how you saying about Justin Boots. And yes. so I've got to ask, what was the story behind adding Justin Boots in Country and the Girl? Yes. So I own the country. Yes. You were right. Country and the Girl. You got it right. <laughs> um, so for me, I grew up working in Justin Boots. Like, I don't know, it was a very obvious brand. I'm a Texas girl and Justin is a very Texan brand and no Kona, you know, like, you know, I just, I had Justin's like that, that was the area that I grew up in. It was the most familiar brand to me. And I grew up working in ropers. So like the very traditional ropers, which is so funny. Cause like I ride in like the Clara booth. It's like, super, I have more right now, <laughs> but they're like the high, like super tall. I don't know what you, sh- shaft. I don't know yeah. what you would call it. Look the at leg. You. Is that right? <laughs> Shaft, yeah. Oh, I thought it was just totally <laughs> off. Anyway, that. Um, and because I like it for out here because there's rattlesnakes and stuff like that. But in Oklahoma, like we had snakes and everything, but I we were on four wheelers, so I didn't need to worry about the toe or anything like that. And I just loved the way ropers looked. And so when we were writing that song, mm-hmm. I was like, they were like, Do you have a brand you love? And I was like, Yeah, Justin Boots. And they were like, sweet. And we just put it in the song. And it's so funny because obviously Justin has like a massive presence in the Western industry, the rodeo world, all of it. Um, but I I've loved hearing girls come up to me and be like, oh my gosh. Like when I heard that, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm wearing Justin's right now. They felt like they were a part of the club. And, um, I don't know. It just, it felt like the right fit because I had been wearing them for so long that it just made sense to me that that was what we use. Plus like to me, Justin's a work brand as much as it is a fashion brand. Um, and so, That And that's what we were trying to talk about in the song is like the difference between somebody who wears boots because they, you know, want to look the part versus people that wear it for utility and do have a nice pair of boots that they wear on the weekends, but they're wearing them because they have a job to do. And so, yeah, it just felt like the right uh, call to make. And nobody had, I wrote that song with two dudes and. Um, one of them is my future brother-in-law, which is a side note, but like, they were like, that's so sick, Jenna, you know, and like both of those guys, like they, they're country, but they're not like Western at all. So, um, they had no, you know, weigh in at all. They were just like, yeah, sounds sick. Get me a pair if you get sponsored by them. (laughs) Well, now we're happy to send them all some, right? (laughs) Yes, exactly. Like, Um, thanks, dude. Yeah. (laughs) Before we go, we, we literally have zero time left, but I want people to be able to buy your merch. I want them to be Thank able to you. listen to your songs. Where where can they hear you? Where can they find you? Tell us everything. Thank you so much. Um, So yeah, jennapaulette.com is where you would be able to buy merch. We've got a bunch of stuff coming. We should be launching like the week of the record. Um, And it'll be a lot of really fun stuff. We've got trucker hats that are modeled after the feed store in Gainesville, Texas which is where my mom grew up and where my grandparents lived and commuted to and from the ranch, um, t-shirts and sweatshirts and koozies and all that good stuff. Um, and I cannot wait to reveal it all and, um, designed them with a friend of mine and she knocked it out of the park. So that's where you can find that. And then socials, just Jenna Paulette. If you look on TikTok or Pinterest or Instagram or Facebook or anything, just J E N N A P A U L E T T E. And yes, that really is my last name. People are always like, is that your middle name? And <laughs> no, my last name. <laughs> well, very good. I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule. I know you're on tour with Aaron Watson right now. So thank you again for carving out a little bit of time to talk with us. We love you so much. I love you love so much. You. And I wish you the best in everything you do. And you guys heard it March 31st. Get ready. That's all you're going to ever want to listen to for the next rest <laughs> of your life. 